video on this channel. I'm Ethan Rishock and I'll be the host. This channel will discuss business and tax advice, personal finance and marketing advice. It'll cover for individuals and businesses alike. Today's topic will be starting a business in Australia and the step-by-step -step guide on how you can do that yourself. Lots of people see these things online and go, oh, I wish I could be a business owner, but they don't really know where to start. Luckily, in today's technology, things are quite simple to do and you can actually be up and running in the same day with very minimal startup costs. Um, the first thing to consider is what is going to be your business. Now, there, look, there are a million ideas out there, um, but you want to pick something you're passionate about, something that you have a good understanding of, and something that is unique. You don't want to be copying someone else's idea uh, completely because it's going to be very hard to beat that competition that's already in place. So when you're thinking of an idea, try and think, what, what do you like to do in your spare time? What do you like to do as a hobby? What's something that you really enjoy doing? Time goes quick when you're doing it. These are all things to consider. Once you've thought of that, it could be a YouTube channel. It could be something in retail. It could be a service you want to offer. There's lots of different options out there for you. But just remember, pick something that you're not going to feel like it's a chore to get done. Because especially if this is going to be a bit of a side hustle that you do after hours, you don't want it to be a slaving away and not enjoying it because that will be the quickest way to finishing up really quickly. All right, step two is choosing the right structure for your business. And this is one of the main steps that you may need some advice when doing. Um, so you can speak to an accountant. It's probably the best bet to go to just to get some advice here on what's the best structure for you. While you can do this yourself, and you may, a lot of people may be able to, this is something that if you don't get right in the beginning, can cost you a lot in extra tax later, and also a lot in extra fees if you're having to change structure down the track. So in Australia, we have four main types of structures. The first, which is the most common, is a sole trader. So this is when you have an ABN under your own name, and you trade under your own name. Uh, this is quite simple to set up, and you can just go online, apply for an ABN. You don't, it isn't a separate legal entity, so it's just under your own personal name. The next option is a partnership, which is similar in concept to a sole trader, but instead it's a partnership. So it may be Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and they, the partnership exists as a separate entity in this case, but all the profits get directed back to the two partners or three partners, however many there may be. The next option is a trust. Um, now this is a completely separate legal entity and that will require a trustee to be set up to create this entity. This is when you're starting to get into a more complex area and there's many different types of family trusts, uh, there's unit trusts, etc. This definitely would need the advice of an accountant and maybe even a lawyer to get this set up. Now this can have lots of tax benefits but you'd need to speak to your personal accountant so that you have a better understanding of if this is the best option for you. The next option is a company. So again, similarly to a trust, you'll need the advice and you'll need the, uh, a third party to help set this up. Again, this has its own constitution and has a whole bunch of rules that you need to abide to when trading under this structure. There's no one, fit, one shoe fits all for this. There's always going to be different entities that are suited to different people. But it's really important to get that right in the beginning so that then further down the track, you're not having to change entities because that involves changing an ABN, and it can also involve recreating entities, changing invoicing, uh, changing bank accounts. There's a lot of things that you need to do later on. So if you get this right in the beginning, it makes life much easier. It's also important to get this right for tax savings. There can be huge tax savings depending on which way you set up this entity, and these are all legal tax savings that you're able to take advantage of. Now you've picked up your concept for your business and you've picked a structure, now it gets to the part of actually registering that business, registering an ABN and business name, and that is step three. So to register an ABN, this is quite simple. You just go to abr.gov.au, which I'll link in the description, and this is where you go. You go through there, go to register an ABN, and you select what entity you're picking, and then you go through a question. There's quite a few questions there you need to go through and it's important you get these right. But 
Um, if at the end of the day, hopefully they should spit out an ABN straight away, and this is what you need to start trading. So you do require an ABN in Australia anytime you're running a business. So you can't start trading as a business without an ABN. So it's, but it's important before you've done this that you've taken the key steps to show that you're serious about running a business. So you need to make sure you've done a business plan if necessary. You've done your research into the market and you've decided if this really is something you want to do. So these are all the things that they'll look for to make sure that you're doing the steps required to start a business. Once you've registered your ABN, you can also register a business name. So a business name is, for example, John's Lawn Mowing Service, but the sole trader may be John Smith. So you can trade under the legal entity name, for example, John Smith or John's Family Trust or John Proprietary Limited, but you will need a business name if you want to advertise separately as John's Lawn Mowing. So this can be quite simple. This does come with a fee and you can either do the one year or three year option, but it's really important to do this straight away because this is an Australia wide business name and this secures that business name for you. So make sure you do a bit of research online. Uh, I like to do a bit of a Google search to see whether my potential name comes up anywhere. And the other thing I like to do is look on the social media channels, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, to see if anyone else is using this name. Now they might not have it registered, but it's something you want to consider is that they could be an overseas company or they could be someone else that's already using something similar that you may want to avoid. The other thing is when considering a business name is work out are you going to then register domain names and things like that. So you just want to check the general availability before you decide on this. Once you decide on this, you can do this registration after you've done your ABN and they can be automatically linked. So therefore, if someone searches your ABN, they'll find your business name. Step four is registering a bank account. So you've already got your ABN now and your business name, so you're all ready to trade. Now my first thing that I always would do is set up a business bank account. Now while this may not be necessary under some entities such as a sole trader, I really think it's important to have a separate account for your business funds compared to your personal funds. This first of all keeps your record keeping really simple because you know that everything that's going through that business account should be business related. It also allows you to have a better idea of what funds your business actually has available, not getting mixed up in your personal funds. And it stops you from taking money out of your business account so easily for personal funds. So if you have it all mixed in together and you might have $10,000 in the account and you go spend that privately forgetting that you've got a business bill coming up, whereas if you've got that in a separate account, it'll be more simple for you to keep track of what funds are what. So we're lucky in Australia now there's a lot of low fee or no fee bank accounts that you can set up and you can do a lot of these with the big banks online or some of the smaller banks as well. Normally they will need your ABN and your business name before you do that though. So now you've already got those set up, you can go about setting up your bank account. Okay, so now step five is deciding how you'll keep your business records. Now this is something people quite often forget and get months into business before they go, oh no, I haven't kept any records, what should have I been doing? So you've got the bank account now, you've got your name, you've got your ABN. If you make this decision now, it'll make life so much easier for you going forward. So there's lots of options. You can have accounting software and there's plenty of options out there that are now online such as Xero, Myob, QuickBooks. You've got the option to keep an Excel spreadsheet. Um, there's Again, you can find templates online, you can create your own. You can speak to your accountant. They may have something that they may be able to give you. The other option is you just keep receipts and then pile it all up at the end of the year. But I'm gonna guess your accountant will heavily advise against doing that. My best bet, have a chat to your accountant, find out what their recommended software is. That way that they can fit in with you and they've probably got the expertise to help you in that area. This, by having that bank account now, you'll be able to hopefully, if you choose an online option, you can set up a bank feed so that you'll be able to automatically reconcile transactions. If you're using Excel, you can bring up a statement and copy things across. It just makes that life easier. By picking this um, software early on, you can really know that you're gonna capture all that income, all those expenses, and make tax time much easier for you. You can also start running reports to see how your business is actually going. Now, early on, you may have, your expenses may outweigh your income, but it's important to know where you're spending your money, why you're spending your money, and how you're spending your money. 
by doing this early on, you can start to track, is this business actually going to be profitable? Because the worst thing you can do is run this business for years on end thinking that you're making money and then look on your profit and loss and go, oh, we've actually lost money every year and I've had to keep topping that up just to pay bills. Step six, now you can start registering other things such as a domain name and email address. I highly recommend getting a domain name and getting a personalized email address. I just think it adds a lot of professionalism to your business. Now this isn't necessary to run a business, but for the low cost that it now costs to set these kind of things up, it just gives you that advantage that people know that this is someone is taking this business quite seriously. So for those that don't know, a domain name is www.johnsmith.com.au or it could be just .com, could be .net. There's lots of different options now and this is expanding every day. Um, once you've got your domain name, so it might be johnslawnmowingservices.com.au which in Australia to get the .com.au you will need that business name registered. You can then set up an email address. Now this may be able to be done through your web hosting company, can be done through Google's G Suite, uh, I'm pretty sure Microsoft have an option as well. And this might get you to be able to have john at johnslawnmowing.com. Or you can have a contact general email like an admin at johnslawnmowing. So I just think these give you the options. They're low cost and it just adds that little bit of professionalism to your business that might be the difference between someone going, oh yeah, this is a real legitimate company and going, oh, maybe they're just a backyard job and they're a bit unsure about you. Again, it's not... Uh, necessary but I think it's quite vital to running a business to have this set up early on. All right step seven you've got your email address you've got your domain name you've got your business name you you're all set up you're ready to go now you can set up your social media profiles. So I think this is really important to do early on because social media is such a great way to advertise your business at low cost and sometimes even no cost. So there's so many options and I'll go into them in more detail in another video. But you've got your Facebook, you've got Instagram, you've got YouTube, you've got new players like TikTok. Now, look, a lot of people are going to go, oh, oh why would my business need to be on TikTok? Get on there, have an explore around for an hour and see some of the great results people are having with their businesses. They're getting great tractions, great views, and then they're spreading to their other socials. You've then got the options of Twitter, LinkedIn. There's just a lot of different options there and that's where people get a bit overwhelmed. Don't try and do it all at once. Do what you're comfortable with. Most people have a Facebook account, do that. I think Facebook is still the number one social media that you have to have if you're running a business. I don't think you can run a business without it these days successfully. What do I do? I want to go out for tea. I search the restaurant up, get their phone number from there. You need a service. That's where you're going now. It's become the phone book. It's, it's what you use. So get that set up. It doesn't have to be anything overly complex. Just get it set up. That way you've got your basic contact details on there. Uh, if you haven't got a logo done up, you can get that done up. Just get something basic so you've got a contact point of view. And then you can explore what other options are for you. Not all of those platforms are there for every business. But you never know. If you're running something in fashion, Instagram is probably a great option for you. It's very visual. It it attracts that audience that you're looking for. Uh, Twitter, if you're running anything that's in the news industry, Twitter is great for that up-to-date news feed. Uh, you've got things like LinkedIn. So any professional services, again, LinkedIn may be the option. But you don't need to do all of these and you don't need to do them all at once. There's probably not much point having a platform that you've got a profile on but they're not active because then if people are messaging you on there, then you're not replying. That doesn't look good for business. So pick, those, pick a couple to start with that you feel like a key for your industry and then get started, get a profile set up and then you're ready to go. Step eight, this is the fun part. Get your business out there. Create that first post on Facebook advertising. Share it from your own profile. Invite your friends to like the page. Ask some family and friends to share your profile. These are all the things you can do and they don't cost anything. It's great. The advantage to this is that it spreads. One friend shares it, then their friends share it, and it quickly spreads. Now, it's not going to be an overnight success. Don't expect that phone to start ringing the minute you share it. But at least it's starting to get the word out there. You can look into other options, newspaper ads, radio ads, TV ads. 
But one of the big things is just word of mouth. Get those first few clients. Look, you might have to pick up the phone and call around to try and get that first client, but do a great job and then they can refer you on to others. Don't be scared to ask for a referral. If you know you've really helped a customer out or you've sold them a product, ask for them. Look, if you're happy with my service, do you mind leaving a review on Facebook? Do you mind leaving a review on Google? Just ask those things. Don't be scared to ask. But most of all, do a good job at what you're doing. If you do a good job, people will come. Now look, it's not going to be easy. This is the biggest challenge is actually spreading that word. And look, I will do another video talking about some of these different options you've got in this. But just be confident in what you're doing. If you've done all the groundwork and you know your business will be successful, grind at it. It's going to be hard to start with, but eventually the results will start to pay off. Well, that's the video for today. As you can see, there's a few steps you need to do, but it isn't overly complex. You can have this done within a few hours at very low cost. You might have a few little startup costs there of the domain name, your business name registration, you might pay someone to do a logo, etc. But for a couple hundred dollars and maybe even less, you can be all ready to run on the same day. And that's what's really great about this. If you've got an idea, give it a shot. Do the research to start with, but don't be scared to give it a shot. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like. I'd love to people to leave some comments on your thoughts, what businesses you're running, what challenges you're having, and always hit that subscribe button. Thank you and talk to you later.